So now we have everything we need to deploy the project. And so in this one, we'll actually be deploying it. So let's go ahead and dive in. So I'm over here in my shell in the directory that we've been doing everything else in. Um, and I also have the GitHub repository for Vault on AWS in the background. Now we're not going to be covering how to work with Git and GitHub uh, just because there's so much else out there on it. Um, so if, you, if you're lost or need a brush up on Git, you know, any of the GitHub help docs are more than sufficient. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to make a folder for this repo. And I'm going to creatively call this repo. <laughs> and I'm going to jump into the repo here. And now we just need to clone the GitHub repository. So all the code and files that are up on GitHub into this folder so that we can begin working with it. So to do so, you're going to come over to the page. You're going to click on clone or download. And since I have SSH uh, connected here, I'm going to just use this. But if you don't, you can always just download the zip file, uh, move it to that folder and unzip it. But I'm going to use this method. And so what I'm going to do is once inside of here, I'm going to run git clone, then the git repo link, and then just a dot saying, hey, clone it right to this directory. And it's going to go ahead and pull all of those files down for me. And once done, I'm actually going to go ahead and just open this up in Visual Code Studio. So now I've got it open in Visual Code Studio. And yes, there are a lot of files here, but you know, don't, don't worry about it. You're not going to have to look into basically any of them. <laughs> now, if you haven't worked with Terraform before, just to, just a quick uh, crash course on it, just a very quick aside. The way that you can think about this is that all of these files represent resources that I want created in AWS. So though when we go to use Terraform, it's going to take the credentials that we have set up in the command line interface, and it's going to use those and then look through all these files and say, hey, you know, you know, this person wants a load balancer created, they want some IM rules created, let's go and create them. So you can kind of think of it like a big grocery list of all the things that we want made in AWS. Well, except this one's not, <laughs> not written in ink. But, and, and by that, I mean the difference is, is you can customize it. You can customize it uh, just by changing some variables. So for example, we can change the domain name that this deployment sits behind, right? And we can also tell it the name of the EC2 key pair that we want used with our instances. Now there are a lot of variables in here, but only the first two are required. Those are the only two things that you have to give it. Um, there are a couple of suggested ones that we'll walk through, uh, but as for the rest of them, all of these other ones down here, well, there's a description next to all of them in the file and the documentation covers them uh, pretty sufficiently. So the, what we need to do, we need to make a file called terraform.tfbars. When this file is present and you run Terraform, it is going to look into that file and it's going to say, oh, okay, these are the values for these variables that our person deploying it wants to use. So let's make that file. We're just gonna call it terraform.tfbars and it does need to be named this exactly because this is a file that Terraform looks at. And if you're wondering why this is grayed out, it's because I'm telling Git to ignore it. Now, instead of coding these in from scratch, we're gonna actually go to this tfvars.example. Now, I put this in here so that you can see some recommended, uh, the main variables that you need to concern yourself with. And so let me just go ahead and grab these, copy them, and paste them. And here, now that we have some syntax highlighting, you can see the ones that we need to, to worry about. So the first one we need to change is the domain name. So what domain name are we using? Well, for me, I'm using the secrets.hatrackapp.io and you'll need to use your domain that you have set up. Make sure you don't include the protocol and also make sure that you have that root 50, or not root 53, that you have that certificate manager SSL TLS certificate set up. Now, the next one is the key pair name. So whatever you name that key pair is what you need here. And I have already forgotten what I named that key pair. So I'm going to check and it was called vault access. So vault access is what I'm gonna put here and I'm not going to add .pem, leave that off. 
All right, and so just for the rest of these variables, now the one that I am going to change here is this AWS profile. So by default, it is going to use the default profile. So as if you don't specify that tag tag profile option that we talked about. However, I did set up a profile. I use a specific profile and I need to change that. And I made a profile called Vault Admin. So if you named yours something differently or you're using a different profile, make sure that you change that. Now there's some other settings here. Uh, the bottom ones you don't really need to worry about right now, but these next two, the allowed traffic CIDR blocks and the allowed traffic CIDR blocks IPv6, this is how you would scope this deployment down uh, to just specific IP address ranges. Now by default, it is going to open it up to any different to anywhere. So anywhere you'll be able to ping this endpoint and interact with Vault. But again, that doesn't mean that Vault's open because to do anything significant with it, you of course have to have credentials. And since it's all over HTTPS and since all the data is doubly encrypted, you know, there's not really all that much to worry about because it's also DDoS protected as well. Okay, but for our purposes and for this first time deploy, we are going to leave it at that. And whether you know it or not, we are actually ready to deploy it. This is all you have to do. And in fact, when you're working with this project, all you'll really be doing is just looking at these variables, deciding and deciding what you wanna change, and then going from there. So for example, you may want to uh, change the size of the vault instances. So by default, they're gonna be T2 mediums, uh, but if you wanted to make those smaller, like T2 micros, well then you would just come over here, or you would just copy this, come over here and just do that, the vault instance type T2.micro, and then you would be good to go. But I'm going to just leave it at the default. And so what do we need to do now? Well, now we actually need to use Terraform. So when working with Terraform, the first thing we need to do when we have a project is run Terraform init. This will initialize Terraform and drop in, you'll see him pop up here, some a dot folder with some extra files it uses. And here it'll also grab some other modules we're using. So we're using AWS and the local provider just to generate some files. And now we're ready to go. So I'm gonna clear this output here. And then the final thing we need to do is run Terraform apply. And assuming you've got everything in place, well, this is the last chapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And the first thing it's gonna do before it goes forth and makes all the things is it's going to confirm with us that we do indeed want to make all of the things. So if you look through here, you can see all the different resources it's going to make alongside uh, you know, all the different uh, attributes and, uh, well, sorry, arguments about them. Uh, but I know it's good, so I'm gonna just leave it as is. And when you're ready, you can just type yes. And once you do that, Terraform will haul off and start making all the things. And so this can take uh, anywhere from five to 10 minutes. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video here and I'll resume once mine is done. All right, it looks like mine is done. And uh, you know, even so Terraform here has spit out some outputs here that we need to pay attention to. It logged everything that it made. In fact, if you wanna want proof that it's live, if we hop over to the AWS console and we hop into say EC2, so where all the servers are, and go to instances, we will see that we have our vault deployment instances as well as the bastion. So all of the resources have been created and are indeed live. Now, before we get going, we do have two more things that we need to do. So let me hop back over here. If you're watching your text editor during that long deployment, if you were just staring at it, um, <laughs> you'll notice that a, that a folder popped up here called temp. And inside of temp, there's two files, but only one of them you really need to pay attention to, and it's this vault credentials.sh. Now this vault credentials.sh is a script that you can run that's going to finish the installation process for you. Now all it's doing is just running two commands through the AWS command line interface that you can absolutely just run by yourself. Uh, but just to make it easier on you, you know, the script is right there uh, for you to use. So let me hop over to the shell. So to run the script, you're gonna run dot, dot slash. So we're just gonna give it the path to the script now vault credentials.sh. And so this is gonna run that script as our current shell. 
and we will see a little message here saying, hey, we downloaded something called Vault Creds Encrypted, and you can find them, uh, we've also decrypted them, find them in that same folder, and also here's your load balancer DNS name, just in case you forgot about it up there. Okay, so uh, what happens when you begin Vault? There's two things that have to happen to understand what this file is. When you start up Vault, it's sealed into unseal the vault. So the whole thing is encrypted. So you can't even get to the encrypted data because the whole vault's encrypted. It has to be unsealed. And that's actually done automatically in the background for you. But the second thing is it has to be initialized. And when it's initialized, you are going to, you get back both the root token, so the permanent root token that is yours as the administrator that you use to configure the vault and you know play all powerful and do all of the things. And it also gives you what are called shammer keys. Instead of having one master key, it splits the keys up into five different shards by default. Uh, you know, like a sci-fi novel or something. <laughs> and that way, uh, you know, you, just get, you pass those shards out to different people. So that way, not any one person has all the power. And if you ever lose that root token, you need all of those shards or three of those shards at least to come back and rebuild it. That's all vault stuff though. So we're not going to get into it. Long story short, it has downloaded those credentials for you and decrypted them because when they're created, they are encrypted and thrown into an S3 bucket where they are also encrypted and only you, the admin, can pull them down and decrypt them and here they are. So these are the credentials that we'll need to manage things as an administrator. So these are right here. But on top of that, there's one other thing we need to do. And the other thing we need to do is we need to CNAME our load balancer here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. So this is the DNS name of the load balancer where traffic should go. However, it doesn't mean anything right now. And it doesn't mean anything right now. Well, you could go to it if you really wanted to. But the problem is, is the certificate that we've put on it isn't for this domain, is it? No, it's for whatever it is that you put. And in my case, it was for secrets.hatrackapp.io. So what I need to do, and this is where I was saying you need to be able to make DNS records. I'm going to go to root 53 and I'm going to go into my hatrackapp.io DNS records here. And I need to create a new record for secrets .hatrackapp.io. And I need to make it a C name. And we're not going to put it as an alias. And for the value, the value here is where we need to put the actual name or the actual uh, the value for the load balancer, the, the load balancer DNS, sorry, and then create it. So again, if you're on something like Namecheap, you're just gonna go to advanced DNS, click on add record. You're going to choose a CNAME type record and you're gonna put this in as the host. Uh, so not this in, sorry, secrets, taught, secrets as the host, and then you're going to drop in the load balancer DNS as the value. Now, as for how long this takes, uh, you probably need to give it a few minutes, uh, depending on your uh, domain name registrar, I can take anywhere for a few minutes to who knows how long. Namecheap will sometimes say 48 hours, but often uh, often it's, it's pretty instantaneous. So I'm going to just give it some space here and I'll come back when I know that it's working. All right, so I gave it a few minutes and then I checked it and mine is now indeed up and running. If you navigate to secrets.yourdomain, uh, it will redirect you to the Vault Web UI and you will see it here and you can now sign in and start using Vault, right? And so to start using Vault, well, <laughs> that's what we're going to do uh, later. That's what we're going to do in the next video. So, But know that it is done. I guess we can just go ahead and uh, log into it for the first time. So you sign in with your token. So let me hop over here to my decrypted credentials. This is the token. I'm going to grab it, hop back over, paste it in, sign in, tell Google that I don't want to keep caching stuff. And now we are inside of the Vault user interface. And there we have it. Deployment is done. Now, there are more videos in the series you can watch if you're interested. But of course, if you're a Vault expert and you're just ready to start using it, well, then you're good to go. Um, but the next video will do some basic usage of Vault. Uh, so, you know, just a, a quick workflow, quick and simple workflow that can get you started, uh, that, can, that can take you pretty far. And then after that, we're actually going to do another deployment. Uh, however, this time we're going to do it in private mode. And private mode, as we've talked about, uh, is going to keep everything internal so that our vault endpoint uh, is unreachable from the public internet. 
Uh, this will let you give it only access to other AWS virtual private clouds or VPCs, uh, which are just private networks. And then finally, after deploying the private version, we'll play around uh, with it so that you can see that workflow as well.